you know, every time I'm like, I'm going to read a thriller, okay? It's going to be good. I like thrillers. I can like thrillers. It, it'll be fine. I don't like it. You know, maybe, maybe I should just stop reading thrillers, you know? It's just like, maybe. Just maybe. Today I'm going to be reviewing Every Vow You Break by Peter Swanson. I think that's what it's called. It's one of the picks. So, if you don't know, The Literally Dead Book Club is a book club that is run and hosted by Kayla from Books and Lala. It is focused on reading thrillers, horror books, uh, just like stuff in that vein. I've participated in a few times. I have a reading vlog for One by One by Ruth Ware, which you will find in the cards up here. Up here? I can't remember which hand I point now. It's been too long. It follows a woman who is preparing to get married and um, after her marriage, after the wedding, she goes on her honeymoon and on her honeymoon she finds that a man she had an affair with three weeks before her wedding at her bachelorette party is there and waiting for her. I don't know if that's a bit spoiler. I didn't read the description for this book at all. I don't know what's in it. Whatever. This is a spoiler-filled review because I think spoiler-free reviews are for cowards. We start with what feels like a contemporary. You basically just follow this woman um, as she prepares for her wedding. We get flashbacks to the night of the affair. We get um, like snippets of her past, snippets of her relationship. I would say about 30% of the book is that contemporary feel where they're establishing the world and the characters and stuff like that. I didn't mind it personally. Um, it was probably some of my favorite part of the book. I also think it does a great job of laying the thematic groundwork down for the rest of the book. You very much get an idea of what the book is going to explore in that section. Um, it lays down, it lays down like, the themes of infidelity and the need for stability and just how weird and bad men can be stuff like that and then when they get to the island when they actually get to the honeymoon um i think that's when it picks up it does pick up a bit at the wedding because we are led to believe that the uh ex not the ex-boyfriend but the man she slept with is at the wedding is like lurking in the shadows um so there's some tension there and um that tension builds as they get to the island and it's revealed that he's there on the island and he is trying to blackmail, um, trying to blackmail the main character. Her name is Abigail. I didn't say her name. He's trying to, uh, his name is Scotty. Or, yeah, his name's Scotty. So, Scotty's trying to blackmail Abigail into, uh, sleeping with him one more time to prove they are in love that it is true love and for me it was at this point when I realized um there were some curious connections in the speech pattern so uh we get a point where when Abigail first meets her husband what's his name I can't remember his name his last name is Liam so when she, she meets the man who's going to be her husband and he says something about love at first sight and how he knew from the first moment he met her that they were going to be in love, that they were soulmates. Um, Scotty says something very similar to that. And that just like... I'm not going to say it set off any red, red flags because it didn't, not at the time. Like, it was something I noted. I was curious about it. I thought it was just like... Um, a habit of writing because sometimes it can be hard to develop original voices and characters and I have never read a Peter Swanson book before so I just kind of assumed it was a quirk like that. I didn't turn my light on. I just sort of assumed it was a quirk like that so I put that in the back of my head but I will say that from the very beginning I 
kind of assumed that uh, Scotty would not be the big bad because just if you watched my one by one vlog, um, you would know that I am not someone who is surprised by thrillers. Um, I don't think I've ever truly been surprised by a thriller and I do not fault the books for that. It is just something that's like always been a thing. So the yeah, thrillers do not surprise me. I cannot name one that has surprised me that I've read so far. Um, the closest would probably be Lock Every Door by Riley Steiger, and even then it didn't really shock me. So when I got the feeling that um, Scotty wasn't going to be the big bad, primarily because it was very obvious. Um, not that it's obvious that he wasn't going to be the big bad, but it was obvious that he was being set up to be the big bad. That always sets up alarm bells. So. Um, I will get to what actually happened, but, like, from the start, I knew that Scotty was not going to be the big bad. Um, there was just too much effort going into that, and, um, not enough justification for his motivations for that to make sense to me as a reader. So, I kind of wrote him off as a, like... Not an ally, because he's still a creep. He's a creep and a stalker. No matter what. But, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't, I wrote him off as, like, harmless at the end of the day. Um, not, like, harmless, but, like, not a thriller villain, because he's very, he was very much just the sort of man you see in day-to-day -day life. Where we meet another character, Jill. She's the only other woman on the island, and she's also honeymooning with her husband. And... We learn that something similar is happening to her in that her ex-boyfriend, her ex-fiancé, has shown up and he is threatening to reveal that uh, she lied to her husband about being being a virgin. And um, Abigail never tells her that this, something similar is happening to her. She just wants to like keep it to herself, but... This is really, I think, supposed to be the first sign that something, like, weird is happening. Um, for me, personally, the first sign that something weird was happening when it was all, like, all men. Um, I don't trust men. And I certainly wouldn't trust an island that the guests are mostly men and where the, uh, staff is mostly men. I felt weird, like as soon as that happened but yeah that uh, uh, provided some good tension but i'm not sure if that was supposed to create tension because the author is a man and might not know how like on edge it would make some women to be surrounded entirely by men on a remote island where anything could happen to you Abigail says that she's gonna, like, do stuff and, um, she's gonna, like, befriend Joe to make her more at ease and stuff like that. They agree to meet up at the pool the next morning. Um, not, well, not next morning. It's, like, 10. So, technically the morning, but, like, late morning. So, they wake up. Um, Abigail wakes up in the morning and she decides to spend some of the morning at the beach with her husband whose name is never coming back to me. They spend the morning at the beach and she ends up falling asleep when she wakes up. Oh, I forgot a bit. Um, Abigail sneaks away. This is somewhat before the Joe stuff. Abigail sneaks away and calls her friend, Zoe, and asks her to look in to uh, Scotty and uh, uh, the friend ends up finding out that Scotty is actually named Eric and that he um, is suspected of murdering his wife on their honeymoon and stuff like that. Also that the fake name he called Abigail was the name of his wife. When she wakes up she sees Scotty slash Eric talking to her husband and 
while like they're just talking it's suspicious you know you know how it is um nothing much comes of that other than some stuff later on but that doesn't really matter i'm gonna skip over it with scenes like this and a few other scenes we see throughout and um later on i think that peter swanson does a good job of establishing and building tension there's always this like nugget of tension that is at the back of your mind that builds and builds throughout the fiction he, he writes, at least for this one. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that. It was a intriguing reading experience and it left me like not on the edge of my seat, but it, it was incredibly engaging is what I mean to say. Uh, when she goes to meet Janet at the pool, she's not there. She doesn't think much of it. She goes to bed and she's awoken in the middle of the night to Joe bloody hitting on the window of where they're staying. She goes out into the woods and tries to find her and she doesn't. She wakes her husband up and tells him about it. They report it to staff and nothing comes of it. In fact, she's told that Jill and her husband left the island that afternoon. She doesn't believe it and she asks to call them, but it's three in the morning, so they decide to do it in the morning. She wakes up, she's told that Gerald's fine, they called her and everything, but she can't call them right now or anything. I, I You can see where this is going. Um, She ends up confronting an employee, Melly, Molly, something like that. Melly, Melly's one of the few women that work there, and Melly ends up saying that Jill and her husband never really left the island. So, yeah, they never really left the island according to Melly. Abigail decides to go find her, and Eric helps her with this. They have a conversation, and Eric says that he thinks that she's in danger and that she needs to escape from the island. Uh, what that ended up happening is that, um... Instead of looking for Jill, Abigail decides it's better if she just gets off the island and she asks for him to leave. She asks her husband if she can leave. Um, he says, yeah, and he says he'll call a plane. But the next day, the plane doesn't show up and she's told she has to wait another day. However, she like makes some calls and like doesn't really put up with that and her husband ends up calling her a snobby b-word or spoiled b-word something like that and they get into a fight about it and in that moment she decides not only does she have to leave the island but she has to leave her husband um at this point i would admit i was a bit less engaged i think when it comes to stuff like this i prefer slower paced stuff no that's not right. I prefer to stay in the, like, slowly increasing tension part portion of it as long as possible before we get to the action stuff. And I just think that the action of the thriller for this one came a bit too fast for me. Maybe I don't like thrillers. Maybe I need, like, suspense. I don't know. I think the action started to happen a bit too fast for me personally, but it's whatever. It, it's whatever. A plane ends up coming in, and um, um, Abigail goes to get on the plane, but Eric says that he that they threw Jill off the plane, and um, that's like how they how they got her, and. Um, her husband shows up, he's, he's like, you're not leaving with my wife, my wife and I are leaving together. And they have a toxic masculinity showdown right in front of the, uh, airplane pilot for some reason. And what ends up happening is that it is revealed in this moment that Eric is, I didn't admit this. I didn't mention this earlier, but... During her talk with Eric, Eric revealed to Abigail that he was hired to sleep with and seduce her as a fidelity test. So, in that admission, is part of the reason she begins to trust him, even if um, 
she is now sure he's more of a creep he um it is but it is in this confrontation with the airplane pilot that it is revealed that he is still working with the husband and the people the husband is working for with that is not something i saw coming i i just thought he was a creepy man and i don't know i think it was a twist that like was well established i think it made sense i just uh, i think had the climax of the story been different i would have liked him or not even the climax if the um falling action falling action the bottom part of the plot pyramid not plot pyramid if the bottom part of the plot structure like this part if that um had been different i think i would have been more amenable to this plot twist but i wasn't Abigail runs away, she ends up hiding out on the island, and eventually she's captured, she's held with Jill, and it is then they learn they've been they've been kidnapped by an MRA code, and <laughs> why do they have to make it an MRA code? Um, I think the fact that instead of just showing this as an extension of the patriarchy, like, instead of just letting this exist as something fucked up that happened something that is a obviously more extreme version of something that could happen in reality instead of like letting that be he had to link it to a real life form of extremism i didn't care for it like it felt to me very much like not all men despite the fact that every man in this book except the father of the main character is like this so it is what it is that personally cheapened a lot of it for me i think it undercut a lot of the themes and messaging of the book and is probably a lot of the reason i didn't like it uh beyond the fact that once like a lot of the actiony stuff started happening i kind of just pieced out and played the sims 4. she uh ends up murdering her husband after she sees alex uh, joe's husband kill her and she escapes the island and it's good it's all hunky dory she's traumatized for the rest of her life but she should she, but she survived um it is in this part of the book that it explicitly stated that it was specifically an MRA cult and you know my family about that already. In the description down below you will find links to a number of important causes. I suggest checking them out if you have the time. time